Making a visually interesting timeline for this fictional universe is something I wanted to do since I started this channel. Now that I have some extra time to make a video of this scale, I'm going for it. I'm not going to include instances in history where no time range is given by George Martin just because it will complicate the timeline. For instance, the Great Empire of the Dawn. There's a lot of lore about the Great Empire of the Dawn and the other first civilizations in Essos like the Kingdom of Sarnar and the Old Empire of Gis. But since there are no dates for these ancient lands of Essos, I gotta save that for another video. The first recordings of history that aren't just passed from word of mouth is the Dawn Age in Westeros. Everyone from Westeros originated from Essos. Around 12,000 years ago, the First Men, yep, that's what they were actually called, invaded Westeros by crossing the Arm of Dorne. Before man came to Westeros, there was only children in the forest and giants roaming around. The weirwood trees with carved faces were being cut down and burned by the First Men, and a war erupted between the two. The children in the forest had magic, but the First Men were larger and wielded bronze swords and had leather shields. The children in the forest resorted to destroying the Arm of Dorne, separating Westeros from Essos. They also tried to break Westeros in two from what's now called the Neck. They failed however and the Neck flooded becoming a new swamp region. The feud continued until finally about 2000 years later a peace treaty was signed called the Pact. The signing ended the era of the Dawn Age and brought in the era of the Age of Heroes. Legends like Bran the Builder, the founder of House Stark, and Land the Clever, founder of House Lannister lived during this time. A couple thousand years later after the start of Age of Heroes, the Long Night came upon the world. The Long Night is the longest winter ever in this story, lasting an entire generation that covers the known world in darkness. While people were freezing and starving to death, a new threat called the Others came down from far up north. The show decided to call these Others the White Walkers. The First Men and the Children of the Forest fought together against the White Walkers in a war called the Battle for Dawn. At some point during the war, Azora High, or the Last Hero, was somehow an important figure and a vital figure to winning and saving the world. Brandon the Builder had the wall built after the Long Night to ensure the White Walkers wouldn't return. It said he had help from the Giants and Children of the Forest, and that it's fortified with their magic. The First Men, living on the north side of the wall, are trapped and became hostile towards the people south of the wall. They became known as the Free Folk or Wildlings. East of Westeros, sometime after the Long Night, some peaceful shepherds living on the Valyrian Peninsula came across dragons living within their many volcanoes. With magic, they tamed these dragons and with time formed the greatest civilization. Back at the wall, the 13th commander of the Night's Watch fell in love with the female White Walker and declared himself king. He's called the Night's King but not to be confused with the leader of the White Walkers on the show. They ruled over the Night's Watch for 13 years until the King of the North and the King Beyond the Wall joined together to defeat them. Around 6000 BC is when the Andals made their way to Westeros. BC just stands for before the conquest and is a dating system used in this series. The Andals migrated from Essos to Westeros just like the First Men, but since the Children of the Forest destroyed the Arm of Dorne, the Andals arrived by ships. They brought with them steel weapons and essentially took over Westeros. The first men remained in the north, but the children of the forest almost completely died out. Some claim the Andals invaded either 4,000 or 2,000 years before Aegon's landing, but I'll leave it at 6,000 BC for simplicity. In 4700 BC, the fifth and final Gascari War took place. Before dragons were around in Valyria, the old empire of Gis ruled over Essos. They lost each great war to Valyria until finally the dragon riders destroyed the city and salted the fields so they would never rebuild. Thousands of years later, Valyria is continuing its conquest, and this time going against the Roinar who used water magic. Like all their victims, Roinar fall due to the dragons. Nymeria, a Roinus warrior queen, escapes with 10,000 ships and eventually makes her way to Dorne in Westeros. Together with House Martell, they joined houses and took over Dorne. In 326 BC, an island off the coast of Westeros became a Valyrian outpost. The Targaryens, one of the less powerful dragon lords, claim it and name it Dragonstone. 200 years later, Daenys the Dreamer has a dragon dream of the destruction of Valyria and her father believed her enough to move the entire family and five dragons to Dragonstone. Her dream would eventually become a reality. 12 years later, the Doom destroys Valyria and the Targaryens are the only Dragonlord family left alive. With the Valyrians wiped out, all of the cities under the Valyrian Freehold go through a struggle for power, in a period called the Century of Blood. The Targaryens remained fairly quiet for a while, until the ambitious Aegon decided to conquer Westeros with his two sister wives and their dragons. All it took was two years for him to become the first to unite Westeros under one king. Every kingdom except Dorne was defeated. House Targaryen continued to grow with so many dragons and dragon riders being born, up until 129 AC. AC is a new measurement of time that stands for after the conquering. 
In 129 AC, a war for succession took place within the Targaryen family called the Dance of Dragons. It was a war between dragon riders that led to many deaths. The war weakened the Targaryen family and they lost most of their dragons fighting each other. The war ended in 131 AC after the leaders of both sides ended up dying. The dragons that hatched following the war were sick and didn't live very long. The last dragon dies in 153 AC and the rest of the eggs are unable to be hatched by any Targaryen. 187 years after Aegon's conquest, Dorne finally becomes a part of the Seven Kingdoms. The Targaryens kept trying over the years through force, but it was through marriage that Dorne joined. The Dance of the Dragons wasn't the only war for succession within the Targaryen family. In 196 AC, Daemon Blackfire, a Targaryen bastard, believed he was a rightful heir and rebelled against his half-brother. He died fighting his own family, but his children escaped to Essos and eventually returned for four more Blackfire rebellions. If you guys haven't checked out George Martin's short story about a knight and a Targaryen prince called the Hedge Knight, it's available in graphic novel form and takes place in 209 AC. It's a great story that adds a lot to the Game of Thrones world. That Targaryen prince would later become king and his first act was to send Brennan Rivers, also known as a Three-Eyed Raven, to the Wall as punishment for a crime he committed as Hand of the King. It's crazy to believe he would sentence his own family since the Three-Eyed Raven is a Targaryen bastard but he didn't join the Night's Watch alone. In 233 AC, Aemon Targaryen traveled with him to become a maester for the Night's Watch. The Thread Raven would rise to become Lord Commander, but in 252 AC, he went missing north of the Wall, where he must have come across the Children of the Forest and joined them. In 259 AC, the tragedy of Summerhall took place. King Aegon V, the main character in George Martin's short stories, and the same king to sense the Thread Raven, attempted to hatch dragon eggs with wildfire, but it went horribly wrong. The castle called Summerhall was set on fire, killing Aegon V, his eldest son, and his Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, and probably many more. Rhaegar Targaryen also happened to be born just outside while the tragedy took place. If you recall the song, The Reigns of Castamir, it was the clue Catelyn Stark noticed before the Red Wedding went down. The song reminds everyone what Tywin Lannister is capable of. In 261 AC, two houses in the Westerlands, House Rain and House Tarbeck, rebelled against their liege lord House Lannister. Tywin's father was in power at the time and was a weak lord. Tywin handled the situation by destroying both houses and having their families go extinct. This led to Tywin becoming Hand of the King to his old friend Aerys Targaryen II. By 277 AC, Aerys had been king for years but it was only until the defiance of Duskendale that his mental state would be looked at as a full-blown madness. He was kidnapped by Lord Darklyn when visiting Duskendale and imprisoned for six months until he was rescued by Sir Barristan Selmy. The Mad King didn't leave his home for four years after the defiance. It wasn't until the tourney at Harrenhal to decide to leave the Red Keep. He only left because he believed his son Rhaegar was plotting to take the position as king with other powerful lords. Rhaegar would go on to win the tourney and crown Lyanna Stark as Queen of Love and Beauty, passing on his wife, Elia Martell. A year later, Lyanna is believed to be kidnapped by Rhaegar, not too far from where the tourney took place a year ago. This leads to her brother Bran Stark demanding justice from the Mad King, but that only results in his death along with his father's. The Mad King also wanted the heads of Ned Stark and Robert Baratheon. Robert and Ned rebel, with their bannermen along with the Vale and the Riverlands by their side. Rhaegar, Lyanna, and the Mad King die and Robert is crowned king since he is a cousin to the Targaryens. Ned returns home with a bastard child named Jon Snow. The Mad King's wife was in Dragonstone during the rebellion but died giving birth to Daenerys the following year. Viserys and Daenerys are sent off to Braavos where they would be safe. It didn't take long for another rebellion to take place. This time it was House Greyjoy. In 289 AC, Balon Greyjoy believed it was a perfect opportunity to crown himself King of the Iron Islands, believing Robert's rule was unstable. He was wrong, however, and defeated by the Iron Throne. Two of Balon's eldest sons were killed, and his youngest, Theon, was given to Ned Stark as a ward and hostage. These last few events lead to the world and story that we all know. The next major event is the return of the White Walkers in 297 AC, and the beginning of Game of Thrones.
If you think I left out any important moment, I would love to hear your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm sure from this point onwards, I'll be talking about Season 7, since it's starting in a couple weeks. If you want to see my work outside of YouTube, links for my mobile game, Beef, are at the top of the description. I'll see you guys next time.